Are go-tos illegal? You've probably heard the argument that go-tos make your code unreadable, but this code's unreadable and there's not a go-to in sight. So what's the deal with go-tos? In this video, we'll talk about what a go-to is under the hood, how you can use go-tos incorrectly, and how to correctly use them to make your code not only more readable, but more efficient. Let's dive right in. To discuss go-tos, we need to first understand what a go-to actually is. Here, I'm looking at some code, and in the code, we do some pretty straightforward stuff. If argc is equal to two, which means that we gave it two command line arguments, we invoke the goto statement that tells the compiler to insert code that will make the code run at the print label. We define a label, which is different from a function that's just an area of code inside of a function with the name of the label and then a colon and then code after that. So if we give it two arguments, we go to the print label and then we go there and we print that we got two arguments. Awesome. Otherwise, if this didn't happen. We go to leave and then from there we return zero. And we can see under the hood what's actually going on in our program by just doing an object dump tac d mintel on what is. And then in main, you'll actually see the exact logic here that we wrote in C in assembly. If you don't fully understand assembly, that's okay. All we're doing here is we're comparing the variable argc to two. And if it's not equal, we go to one label. But if it is equal, we go to another label. What a go to literally is, it inserts a jump instruction in our code in assembly. Now, you're probably wondering, what does this do for us? Why would we actually use this? And that's actually a great question, because if you look at this code already, we have began to very heavily obfuscate what the code does and make it very difficult to read. I'm already just looking at this code, having a hard time understanding what's going on. So this is a bad example of when go to's are good. And I would argue using logic like this to use go to's is actually really bad. But let's go to a good example, pun intended. Here I have some basic server functionality. And obviously this is not broken out into sane functions that all do one thing. This is all happening in one function. But this demonstrates the point that I'm trying to make. So to run the server, we open a file and like good C programmers, we check that the return value of that open call is a good value. And if it's not, we print the error for open, we leave our program. If we don't fail, if we succeed, we move forward and then we malloc room on the heap to read in data from that file. If that malloc buffer returns null, a bad value, and again, we're checking for that every time because we're good C programmers, we have to go and close that file descriptor, then go to print the error for malloc, then return negative one. And then if that succeeds, we call socket, check for a bad value, and then we have to free the previous buffer we got before. We have to close the file that we opened before. And what's happening here is we are increasing every time there's a possible failure, the amount of duplicative code that we have to insert, right? Because we already have close written here and written here. Now we have to add free. If we have more conditionally failable code that we insert, this gets very, very ugly to maintain. And then even if it succeeds as good programmers, we have to close our file descriptors and free our memory. So we have to duplicate this code again. This is where go to's get really magical. I'm going to insert go to's into this code and show you how you can make it a little bit cleaner. So here I've rewritten the code, but I'm using go to statements and you should immediately see that the code is not only more legible, it's less chaotic and every error state as they cascade down in the code doesn't get longer with the duplicative code like close FD and free malloc, for example. And by the way, if any of the syntax is confusing to you, I am running a course right now called zero to hero C programmer link in the description below. Go check it out if you want to learn more about the C language, the C syntax, or really anything C or assembly related. So the major change to the structure is that I've put a return value variable at the top of the code that we'll use to store our return value, right? It's zero is success. And if we return anything other than zero, we have a non-success state, right? And then later on in the code, like for example, when our socket fails, right? Instead of the socket failing and us having to close a file descriptor, free malloc, and that same code appears all over the place, we just do one go to. That go to is a label that will then fall through and run all of those pieces of code that we had in the previous example. So instead of having to do free here and close here, we can put free at this label, and then the next line of code will run, it'll close the FD after that, and then return the return value, which is set to negative one. And in the success case where none of this actually happens and everything succeeds, we set the return value equal to zero, and after our code runs, we close the socket file descriptor, we free the file buff, we close the FD, and we return the success value. 
And you can see the structure is that the lowest function, the one that's further on in the code, goes to the top level error handler because it has to handle the most things that it has to do. It has to free the buffer, it has to close the file descriptor, et cetera. While go-to's in a lot of other cases make code a lot harder to read, using go-to's to handle error cases allows you to write the same code one time in your error handler and then use the go-to's to jump to what layer of error handling you're at. Now, another cool thing about C is that the switch statement is actually way faster than the if statement. And the reason behind it is really interesting. You'll find out about that in this video. Go, go click.